All right, guys, so first step in redoing our transom and our back of our boat here, uh, we need to take this off, take the engine off. My buddy Ryan built me a uh, <coughs> makeshift um, engine mount stand. It fits perfectly inside of this little rolling dolly here. So we'll be able to move the engine around. We're also going to put on, uh, we're going to make a new platform here. And so this box is coming out and our new platform is going to extend another four inches out. Uh, a little bit more comfortable. It's going to be open underneath. And so the battery and the, and the gas tank are going to sit up underneath here and we'll put, put a place for, uh, our life jackets and stuff but um i'm excited guys because this is gonna really clean up this boat here you know we need to... this box i can't wait for this box to go away we need to unconnect the batteries unwire that i already took the gas tank out it's screwed into the bottom of the boat we're at fiberglass coatings inc in um dania that's ready but we're getting all of our stuff, guys. We've got um, got some resin, fiberglass. We got the, the thin stuff. We got the thick stuff. We're gonna be. We've got plenty of acetone. We're getting all our stuff together, and uh, we're gonna start getting to, getting to it. This is our cost for fiberglass. Probably a hundred and thirty five bucks boatyard resin we got a five gallon pail of the resin is 136 dollars a five gallon pail of this putty is 240 dollars we need some acetone 16 bucks uh, paint rollers body filler kit all right we got some latex gloves and we got a, a gallon of gel coat one gallon of the cheapest gel coat we could find was $71. Um, you know, we spent $687, guys, on material. The Kuza board, that was separate. Uh, that piece was about 200 bucks that we got. And so, you know, this project to do, to do our rear, tran our transom, that's probably going to be, that'll be, 500 bucks by the time we're done with that doing all the work ourselves uh the the polling platform and the the rear deck is probably going to be another four or five hundred bucks for the two of them um you know so you know it is what it is guys boat stuff is expensive and we're, we're saving a lot of money by doing the work ourselves so um even though this price seems a little ouch um it's actually not too bad because we're going to have like a whole new boat <laughs> afterwards uh, after we're done with the work. So, you know, you spend a grand on different materials. You do the work. You, yeah, put your put your blood, sweat and tears, tears into it. And you get, you know, you, you, you put your pride into it and uh, you have a nice product at the end. You enjoy fishing on your boat. All right. So I got my aluminum legs for the back platform done. Uh, they're 11 and a half inches tall, which is if we put a layer of fiberglass on top of them for the for the back platform That should put this right around the same height as this bench. I would I would imagine maybe a little bit taller All right <laughs> Priscilla looks uh, looks naked here. We got this annoying box seat thing off That was here. Obviously we need to clean it up a little bit uh, Engine is off. We disconnected the fuel water separator. Uh, so we're ready to go on taking this transom out. And I, when we took this off, guys, we can see how bad this is cracked back here. You know, you can see this, these cracks is where these engine mounts are going in here. And that's actually, I can push that in with my thumb a little bit. Then we'll start working on the rear platform. All right, guys, we are gonna to piece together what the shape, the measured shape of our rear platform out of this foam and was able to get some scraps of this very expensive foam. And what we're gonna do, Sophia and I, are going to put this together and piece it together 
here's the picture. This is the template that we're going to make. And if this is all accurate, it's going to be good. So we're going to we're going to put see if we can make out of out of these pieces, we're going to make this this template and let's see if we have enough. Sophie, think we have enough? I don't know. We're kind of close. It's weird. We have weird piece weird pieces here. So let's see what we can figure out. This says this says 13 inches across, but we're going to make it 12. So they're going to be 12 inches across from here to here. And they're going to be 24 and a half inches deep. So we need, we need two that are 12 by 24 and a half. That, that'll be the two sides that go up to here. Okay. Then what we'll need is a piece that's 56 inches long by 15 and a half. And that, that'll be that strip that goes from here all the way across. And then we'll just combine them over here. So I know we have two pieces big enough to be 12 by 24 and a half on each side. Let's cut those out now. And then we'll piece together one to make 56 by 15 and a half. Sound good? Sound good. All right, here so we go. So we don't have pieces big enough. So we have to splice a couple together, which kind of stinks. So what we're going to do is we need to measure 24 and a half inches so it's it's literally right right where those dots are sophie so okay. yeah so, so basically start cutting and you need to cut all the way through bingo that That's a little bit better a lot better a lot better sophie's gonna cut for me so she's gonna cut this this is gonna be a 24 and a half inch piece but our problem is that it's not 12 and a half inches deep it's actually a little short this is going to be that's probably about eight inches so we need to cut another strip about that that deep flat sides together. yep flat sides together good all right now that we have our pieces cut next thing to do is we get we're just going to pin them together for now eventually we're going to use a hot glue gun and kind of just bond them a little bit to make a shape but uh for now so we just kind of slide the pin in sideways so that it kind of sticks in we just need to, we need to be able to hold the shape together. All right, now that we have our first piece, got, Sophie, what I want you to do, go grab that big piece right over there that's laying right on top. Grab that. Oh my gosh. Nope. And put it right underneath this one. Put it right underneath. Now, this is gonna be a whole lot easier. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're just gonna trace this one. Make sure that the edge is flush, kind of. All right, yeah, so trace that out. And then we're just gonna cut this out. Then we'll have two identical pieces and some left over for another project. Just keep going, all the way, there you go. Now snap, you should be able to bend it and snap it off. Can I break it? Yep, just nice and easy. There you go. And what we're gonna do, these pieces are gonna go right here and yours is on the other side okay so those pieces are going to go right there resting on top of this plat of this metal uh, aluminum platform and then the next piece is we have to figure out a piece that's going to go across here and there'll be a gap in the middle for the engine and you know that stuff so let's start building this cross piece here all right our rear platform is now cut to shape kind of I have all the seams glued together here. I've got it resting on our aluminum stands. This on both sides, the, the front part of it is pretty flush to the gunnel on both sides. It's, it's flush to the gunnel all the way up here. It gets a little, some little spaces here. I know we're putting in a transom, so there's a gap here that's gonna be filled. We'll probably have to trim some more off of this. Um, same thing here, but this is pretty much cut to size. And um, that's basically what we're gonna be looking at. Uh, this space right here will be for where the, where the engine sits and the gas can and the battery will go underneath this piece right here. We marked all the places where our uh, our, the feet of our aluminum feet are going to go that are going to be the brace that holds up our platform and now we've marked all the places where we're going to sand in order to 
uh, get a proper fiberglass fit. And we've already done the rear, because we're doing the transom as well. That's going to be another video. But we're going to sand the places on the, on the floor here where the feet, the, the aluminum feet are going to be bolted in. We're going to sand that all down because we're going to glass the, where the rear platform attaches right around here. We're going to glass down and we're going to glass over. So basically this whole thing needs to be sanded from this rubber bumper edge all the way over to here. So we're going to sand all this out, but first thing we need to do is we need to remove all of our hardware. This is the hardware for our canopy top. These are our, obviously our cleat. And uh, before we do that, we need to make sure we have good measurements of where they stand. So when we replace them, we know exactly where to place them. So, so we gotta remove this hardware. We are gonna save, guys, we're gonna save all of our hardware because it works, it's not corroded, it looks nice. No reason to throw that away, that stuff costs money. So we're gonna put all of our hardware in a Ziploc bag so when we're done glassing, we'll have everything right there. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all of our hardware. Okay guys, uh, when you're sanding, we're using this Beautiful sanding machine, 40 grit paper. It's really rough. Got to make sure you're wearing your PPE. I'm going to put some glasses on. I got uh, something covering my mouth so I'm not inhaling the uh, fiberglass dust and and uh, gel coat dust. It's going to be very, very dusty. Uh, long sleeves is preferable. I got long pants. Anything that you don't want, don't want to get messed up, don't wear because it's going to get messed up when you start fiberglass work. But here we go, guys. We're going to start sanding. <laughs> After about two hours of sanding, um, I was able to get that whole strip sanded because we're going to glass the platform to that edge there. Same thing over here on this edge of the gunnel. Um, got that all sanded down all the way down to close as I could get to the bumper. Uh, got these uh, two strips down here sanded that are going to be where the um, aluminum feet bolt onto the floor. We're going to glass that on as well. And then there's going to be a little brace in the middle here. So I go, went ahead and sanded that down. So we're ready to go. Our, our Everything is sanded down and we're ready to start glassing. All right, getting dark. So it might be a little bit grainy. Uh, but one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take some 40 grit sandpaper. And we're going to sand the bottom of these aluminum feet. Because this is going to be what goes on to the bottom. And what we're going to do is we want to rough that up really good so that when we glass, it actually has a good, a good hole on it. So we're gonna sand those up and then we're gonna hit this with 320 grit because we're gonna spray paint it. So we're gonna make sure that's sanded up real nice. And so when we spray paint that, it has something to grip onto. But first, 40 grit. Here we go. Okay, as we're getting our foam cut out ready for our polling platform. I'm sorry, our rear platform. Uh, one of the things is to make it aesthetically kind of nice, what we want to do is we want to make these, this curve right here, we want to make this a like a curve instead of a 90 degree angle. Uh, that'll make it easier for glassing and it kind of looks better. So uh, what we're going to do is on both sides, we, we cut little pieces of foam like this and what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. Um, we're going to trace out a, uh, a curve. And we're going to cut that curve out and glue it in here so that when we start glassing, one on each side, we'll have a nice rounded curve. And the very edge here, we're going to curve these off as well. Uh, kind of make it nice. Then we're going to bevel the edges 
like this, and uh, that'll make it easier for glassing and connecting to the uh, to the gunnels and so on. We can actually use a cylindrical shape such as this Clorox wipes container and trace where we're gonna cut. So we make sure that it's kind of nice looking. Gonna do the same thing here on this edge. Make sure it's nice and neat. To the best of our ability here. Okay. It's hard to film and do this at the same time, but I've got our little corners now. And basically what those are gonna do we're going to hot glue those into there. And so when we fiberglass our edge here, it's going to have a nice rounded uh, edge instead of, uh, instead of a 90 degree angle. Got one on this side too. Got my ends cut up here. We're looking good. And time to bevel all the edges on this. Thing. Okay, folks, we have our rear platform uh, foam here. And what we got to do now is we have to bevel these edges to make this nice and roundish uh, so that when we uh, put our fiberglass on, it goes on nice and neat and it actually looks better too. So I've got a this cool nifty little uh, thing that Freddie let me borrow. This is going to bevel it for us. There's a blade right, right here. As we turn this on, that thing spins. And we're going to run it right along the edge here, nice and flat. You can see how it bevels the edge right there. I'm going to be too hard to do this the right way. All right, guys, it's getting closer to be time to glass our rear platform. But before we do, we do have one more thing that we have to do. We have to you see how the, the middle of this thing, there's a big gap between there and there. Even though we're going to be glassing the heck out of this thing, we want to make sure that there's a brace in the middle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to measure. This is actually... 15 inches and it's 12 inches from here to here so we're, we're actually going to cut a uh, fiberglass chunk actually we have we already have fiberglass here um, and we're going to cut pieces off of this and put them together and we're going to make a, a little brace out of these fiberglass pieces that we have here so it's time to glass our rear platform, guys. And uh, now it's, this is 1.5 weight fiberglass. We're gonna make two layers of this on each side. And then I've got some, uh, some of this real thick 17 weight stuff for strength. We're gonna do one layer of that on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace out two layers of this, one layer of the 17 weight. And then these are our little braces that we're gonna make. So I'm gonna measure out some uh, some of that as well, probably from the middle section here that's gonna get kind of wasted. And we're gonna measure these out, cut them, and we're gonna get to glassing. All right, folks. Well, I didn't get it on film. I had major issues with the sun, and uh, I only got to this one piece today, so I'm going to have to get to the rest another day. Uh, I have major bubble issues going on over here. I'm, I'm really not sure why, but uh, we'll let it dry, sand it down, and just glass back over it. So that's the cool thing about fiberglass. If you mess up, it's not the end of the world. You just a little bit more work, and you get back to it. So, All right, guys. All right, now... Here's where the ugly work has got to take place. There are some areas 
where there's some major air bubbles took place. So we've got major, so we got a major air bubble here, pocket, pocket there. We've got some here, got some here. We've got this. This is terrible. And guys, here's what happened with this. Uh, a few few things. Number one, this piece of fiberglass that we were using was so big and awkwardly shaped that it was very difficult to get it on the right way. We did this in the direct sunlight, which is a, also a no-no. Um, I didn't realize that we should be doing this in the shade. Um, this is actually actually okay. This is actually a spare piece that I put on on top because it wasn't thick enough to cover that. But this is an air pocket, bro. This is no bueno. So we have to grind. We have to grind this down. All these little tiny places where there's air pockets like this, we gotta grind this down, and we're gonna have to patch this, sand it, grind it down these little air pockets, patch it, or sand it, and then patch it. Then we'll be able to do the flip side. So we've got a lot of work to do, and I'm gonna get busy with my grinder. This little thing right here. All right, now I've ground down what I believe are all of the air pockets. Uh, I really made a mess of this thing when I did it. I mean, it was some of these were so bad that the air pockets were all the way down to the original foam. Uh, this whole thing here was full of air pockets. I had to grind all that down, grind this all the way down to the foam. Got real soft here, guys. So I, it was a real bad job on this. I, you know, that just showed me, taught me a lesson not to fiberglass in the sun, direct sunlight. But we're, now it's time to sand it down. I got my sander. I'm gonna sand this, make it nice and smooth in these areas and we are going to re-glass and salvage this piece and, uh, and we'll start over. Lorenzo, why don't you dump a little acetone on that rag? All right, and then basically what we're gonna do is just, we're just gonna start up there and start wiping. We're gonna clean it with acetone, make sure that there's nothing on there that we're, you know, the acetone's gonna clean it really good so that when we put our glass patches, uh, that they stick nice and well. We sanded it. Keep going, make sure you drip it all out. All right, so what you're gonna do is, uh, first of all, put, put a little bit on that spot right there, okay? And a little bit right there. In fact, do this whole area. Get it nice and, Nice and wet. What if we did this? Oh, wow. That's wasted. Wow. I don't know. Ooh. There we go. It's nice and nice and thick. Okay. And what we can do is we can put it there. I don't know about that. Yeah. And then just roll it on top. You want, see, see the spot right there? That's where we want it. There we go. Okay, now make sure it's nice and tight. Good. All right, now, uh, here we need a little piece. Here, take this with your hands, dip it in there. The, the, the fiber is side down, so, so that side goes up. All right, now drip it off a little bit. And put it right over the top of this section right here with, with that flat edge along the flat edge here. Okay, go ahead. Two hands. There you go. M move it over the flat edge. Right there. A little bit of little bit of resin. Okay, get get resin on that little edge there. Okay, this is gonna be good. There's no bubbles going here, man. We're 
we're nice and strong on this. Make sure it's nice and... All right, we're gonna save this piece of board, dude. <laughs> we are saving this piece of board. Yes, we are good, guys. We're gonna be good. Uh, the temperature's a decent temperature right now. We didn't do it in direct sunlight. We learned our lesson never to do fiberglass work in direct sunlight ever, ever again. And we're gonna wait until this dries and we're gonna get to sanding. And then we'll see what Freddie says. He might laugh a little bit because this is a, a little bit embarrassing, but our polling platform is gonna be tight. All right, now that we have our redone glass, glassing job here, uh, it's time to grind again, guys. Time to make some noise. Get the grinder on and start hitting it. All right, now the job is we've got to sand, my favorite part again, uh, about four inches all the way around. I'm going to sand up the edges, round them off nice and easy, but we're going to sand four inches all the way around the edge. So when we glass this side and it wraps around, it's got something to bond to on this side. You got to make sure it's roughed up a bit. So we're going to do that right now with my favorite tool in the whole wide world, electric sandor. Oh, it's got to be plugged in. <laughs> All right, it's time to glass our fiberglass sheets onto our rear deck platform. And uh, we've got it all cut to size and we're gonna get started. Here we go. So I put resin on the board and then Fred's filling in the gaps the little cracks with the uh, putty. You would like to do that before you put the, the resin on there. But I Got like it. Okay, just make sure there's no air, air pockets, but now it's time to get glassing. Protection. Okay, it's been a day. Uh, our fiberglass job came out really well. I don't see almost no significant air pockets at all. There's a couple little ones, but not a big deal. We've got plenty of overlap coming out here. What we need to do is we need to grind off all of these edges here with this grinder. Uh, there's a lot of extra resin here for where it spilled over. We've got to kind of sand and grind that off. We're gonna grind this stuff off and then we've got to re-glass some of this front edge and then this entire back edge uh, because there's, there's still exposed foam on the edges. Now this, on this side and that side, we're gonna leave these exposed because when we mount this in the boat, this will be butted right up to the edge of the boat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put fiberglass putty and mesh these two together and then glass the edges uh, with uh, fiberglass. So uh, we're not gonna, we don't have to glass these, uh, these edges, but we have to glass these edges and the edges all around here because those are the areas where our legs are gonna be hanging off the edges. We don't want it, we want it to be nice and smooth. So. Okay, uh, guys, we've got our 
our uh, rear rear deck that's completely solid, solid as a rock. Uh, obviously, we haven't mounted these aluminum feet on yet, but I've got a sand still. But uh, what it looks like is it looks like it's pretty good. It's very solid, and there is a little bit of a gap here. So I'm going to find out from Freddie what we're going to do that about that. Not sure exactly how that happened, um, but there is a little bit of a gap in between the edges, which I was not planning for. Um, hopefully the putty can fix that and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, now the, uh, the top has been sanded, all the edges have been sanded. Now the last step in getting this thing ready is we've got a glass, the inside edge of the rear platform and we've got to glass the very front edge. So what we're doing is we cut fiberglass strips, kind of roughed up the edges and frayed the edges so it'll it'll match nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're just going to glass this. We're going to put these pieces on like so and wrap them around and glass them glass them shut all the way around so that this front part will be nice and uh, smooth. All right, now it's been a day. Uh, our edges have dried. And now the, the goal, next goal is to sand. And what I have to do is I have to sand this down until it's nice and scuffed up like this. Uh, watch this, when it gets nice and scuffed up like this, that's when we can paint on it. And the gel coat has something to stick to. Cause when it's all like this, nice and smooth resin, that's just dried. That's no bueno. So I have to flatten this out, scuff it up. And uh, once we do this, it'll be time to paint. So watch this. All right, guys. Now our next step, before we put our rear deck on and start putting 5200 on the bottom here and screwing that stuff in and glassing to the hull of our boat, or to the deck of our boat, we're gonna need to pressure wash and make sure all this stuff is clean in here. We're gonna pressure clean it right now. Uh, get Make sure that the bond is nice and pure, that there's no dirt, there's no gunk that gets in between the bond of the fiberglass, the 5200 and the deck. So we're gonna get to it right now. Let's get this sucker clean. We got a little rubbing alcohol on a cloth and next step is to make sure that the areas where we're gonna glue are nice and clean so that there's a good bond. Same thing with the bottom of the aluminum feet. We're gonna use some alcohol or acetone. Just, just clean these up real good. Make sure they're nice and, nice and clean, get a good bond. pre-drilled inside of the aluminum feet and we're doing we're pre-drilling these holes here and we're gonna put 5200 on the bottom of these things drill them in screw them in and then place our fiberglass rear platform on top and get to work after a run to home depot for more 5200 <laughs> we're back at it All right, aluminum feet are uh, officially part of the boat, right, Fred? They're one with Priscilla. <laughs> they are one with Priscilla. It's gonna work, man. It's, it feels real solid. Got the 5200 on bottom. Got eight screws holding it on. 
and uh, now it's time to get the glass on top or our deck on top. Here we go. Is it a little little warped? Yeah, we're probably gonna have to put um, some weight to maybe find it out a little bit. Okay. Where's that brace that you made? Is that so you can cover the gap from underneath. From underneath. Yeah. All right. Essentially, you're gonna go like this. But you're gonna do that from the bottom. So, and the purpose for that, Fred? Is so the 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 putty that we're putting on top yep. doesn't go through and make a mess. So we have to put putty to fill this gap here, right? Yeah. All right. So. I'm just going to take a quick little bit about what you're doing here. And that tape is just going to, when we put the putty in, that tape is just going to keep it from gushing, gushing gooing out on, on the bottom and create some kind of a bottom for that gap there. All right, now, time to measure out strips of our thick fiberglass that we're going to use to, after we put the putty in the cracks, we're going to have it all pre cut. So once we put the putty in, we can just start glassing and put the fiberglass strips right on top. So how many strips are we gonna use? Are we gonna use the thin stuff and the thick stuff? Yeah, the thin stuff will do like two coats and then one of these. One of those, on each side. Okay, but we have these uh, these big concrete bricks and stuff to hold, hold it in place. Um, it's not screwed down yet. It's not screwed down yet, yeah. So we're gonna glass it. And then once it's glass, then we screw it down. Got it. Got Woo. squirting hardener. And then what we're doing is we're just filling the gaps. Filling the gaps. So even where the fiberglass is jammed up to the edge, we're still putting it in there, yeah, right? Yeah, because you, you want to build up a. We don't want any air voids between kay. the glass and the part where we're glassing. Okay. No air voids. So we're kind of making like a ramp, right? Yeah. Oh, yours is thicker than mine. It's not so much about the thickness, more about even making sure that it's stuffed in there. Okay. Because you can always take out the extra. Okay. We gotta do the putty first, so I just wanna make sure we have the resin ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we probably have another, at least another quart in there. Yeah, I'm gonna put the other piece here. Yep. <laughs> Priscilla, got your rear deck. Go get through. Got it. Just make sure. See how I kind of like fit over there, right on the edge of that. Okay. So uh, our rear deck is glassed in we have we have these big cinder block and concrete pads holding the glass or holding the this thing down so that it, it dries when the fiberglass dries it dries as close to the the top of this thing as possible that way next time we're gonna drill holes in and we're actually gonna screw it and attach it 
uh, to this platform here. And so we have, we're gonna have a brace in the middle here. Uh, that's not attached yet. We still have to do that. And, but we're just, we have the brace under there just to make sure that the thing doesn't bend with the weight of the concrete up here. But uh, same thing on this side. And guys, yeah, so it's pretty simple. We just have to wait for the stuff to dry, give it a sand job. And, uh, you know, we're gonna need to glass we're gonna to need to glass uh, the underside of this thing to all the way down. Uh, so that's kind of the next phase of the fiberglass project. We need to glass this brace in the middle here and glass that too so that it holds the weight of my fat butt as I'm sitting on this thing or standing on it. It looks like a mess right now, but guys, pretty soon Priscilla's gonna start looking hotter and hotter. It's actually been sitting here for a little while. I had to go and some trips uh, I had a lot of things to do but it's time to get to the next phase of this project as you can see there's some debris that the wind is blowing in here but I gotta get these <clears throat> cinder blocks off now it's just a matter of sanding this bad boy down um, I've got to sand down the edges here where we glassed it looks like it came out pretty good. There's not a whole lot of bubbles. It's there might be a one here. Eh, not a big deal. But we're looking pretty good. I gotta sand this down, make it nice and even. It's my favorite thing to do in the whole wide freaking world. Yeah, right. All right, getting ready to gel coat. We got got the bottoms of our aluminum painted up or taped up. We got our through hole here taped up. We taped up our guardrails, bumpers, uh, the sides here. Just taped up everything. Uh, getting ready to gel coat, guys. This is exciting. This is our stuff. Next next step is to rub this down with acetone. All right, so we're gonna have to paint the top first. The bottom of the top. The bottom of the top, then the floor. The floor and then up top. Then up top. Okay. Makes sense? That's the plan. What's the ratio we mix this with? Well, the, the patch booster, it says 30 to 40 ounces per gallon. We're only going to mix half. We're going to do half, half a gallon. Half a gallon at a time. Okay. So I'm only going to put... Um, 16 ounces of that stuff in here to dilute. Okay, so that just gives you more bang for the buck? And it makes it a little thinner, so it's not as thick when you're putting it on. You don't make big blotches. Okay. Um, it's also, when you're spraying, it makes it a little easier. Oh, okay. I have a sprayer, but that's gonna make a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just gonna roll it off. We're gonna be covering this with seed deck anyway, so. Yeah. On the website? Yeah. Where depending on the temperature and how quickly you want it to dry, it's recommending X amount of MEK. Got so it. we'll go by that recommendation. So that way you can make it dry in an hour so you can drive it home. Yeah, you know what that'll I mean? work. Right now. Yep. Half a gallon. You think a half a gallon is gonna cover us for our project? Well, we're gonna dilute it, so we're gonna have more. Yeah. And we'll so go from might. there. And the thing is, I don't want to mix up too much at all at once because once it hardens, it's just like the hardener. Yeah. We have, and if we make it extra hot, it's yep. gonna dry up even faster. Got it. I don't want to go through that. Got it. Yeah, it's that's not a fun ordeal. No. So I'd rather when I when I painted this thing, boy, I was I was screaming. <laughs> it was clumping up in like thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then remember, we gotta. Paint the bottom, paint the top. Yep. Paint there and then come out here. Yep, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this doesn't dry yet. This is just so expands it, yeah, it dilutes it. All right, so the plan now is get everything ready because as soon as you put this, what do they call this again? MEK. MEK, once that goes in, it hardens up real quick. You have it all, you're on the clock. Hopefully, that's probably gonna be working on the same one, right? Yeah. All right. Now, we are on the clock. 
All right, guys, here we go. We're on the clock, so we're gonna we're gonna try and do this without getting too dirty here. Fred's gonna paint paint the back of the transom, and I'm gonna use this smaller one to try and do the. Let's see how this works, guys. Gel coated, ready to go, baby. Yeah. Yeah. We are gonna make it. Fifty two hundred, but it all good. It's on, dude. Mineral spirits. Wipe it up. You want me to work on the floor? Yeah. And we'll then work on the floor and we'll work on the top and the side. All right, here we go. All right. All right we, guys. We're gonna try and beat the thunderstorms. Yep. All right, guys, you wanna get a <laughs> Lorenzo, you want the roller? Or I'll yeah. take the roller? Sure. And you guys get a brush. All right. No bueno. When you're trying to paint, it starts to rain like this. We thought we were gonna be able to squeak it out. Not even close, man. Not even freaking close. Is it gonna dry, Ryan? What do you think? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> it's drying. The tent, the tent's the saver. Okay. Freddy's here? What? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There we go. That's some professional, that's some professional uh, paint job right there, buddy boy. Let's go. Okay, it's a great day. The Yami's going back to Priscilla. Yami? Yami, bro. The reunion. You don't want your Yami on the Priscilla, Lorenzo? I want my Yamaha. You want your Yamaha? Come on, baby. While we're waiting for our paint to dry, figure we wheel out the engine and get ourselves reacquainted. Lorenzo, yeah. I know you're praying, but at long last, we're gonna mount our Yamaha back on Priscilla. You ready, buddy? Yes, I am, finally. Finally. Dude, when, when we took this thing off, you were about that tall. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in the last nine months? All right, guys, uh, we already have the holes. We already have the holes drilled, or not drilled, but that, that's where the original holes were, so we know exactly where to drill. We got some thicker bolts. We got some uh, three eighths. Where'd they go? Where'd I put them? Ah. We got some three eighths. Uh, uh, we got five inch three eighths uh, stainless steel bolts. And uh, the former were four inch, but because we made our transom a little thicker, we, we got some five inches to make sure they go through. Now it's time, boy. It's time to get the sucker on. Now. Why are you doing that? Come this way. Come that way. Uh, Don't let go yet. We gotta. It's a little wide. Is the transom too wide? Yeah. Oh no. Well, what happens when it? Oh no. No. The transom's too thick. We rebuilt it too thick. So we had to cut the wing nuts off. We got a few more bolts. 
Now, we're gonna try again, video man Matthew. Let's get this bad boy done. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Try, let's, I'm gonna try to get the battery. Okay. Is it good? Yeah. Let it go? Yep. Is it, is it too thick? For real? Yeah, bro. Still? Yeah. Well, that size. it just <laughs> doesn't fit on. It just doesn't fit on. We're gonna have to grind a little bit of our transom just to get this thing on. Uh, let's, we should probably get it centered and then uh, we just need to grind a little bit away to uh, make sure it gets on right. Dang it! <laughs> Alright, we had to grind in a little bit on the cruiser right, board. If that doesn't work... <laughs> well, we, we had to grind little grooves in. All we needed was about a quarter inch. I think we got it. Uh, Matthew, cameraman, okay. here you go, buddy. You're filming. Yeah. Is on? Ah, uh, just so a little weird right there. Might as well squeeze the 5200 in now, right? Smear it all in there. All the, all the gray. I don't want any water getting in the, into that transfer. It's, I don't think it will, but I don't know how much if any of the resin is penetrated that deep. How fast did that start dry? Overnight. Oh. Uh, it'll start to harden in an hour or so, but you're supposed you're not supposed to mess with it until at least the next day. For two probably two days. Well it really hardens. We gotta we're, we're gonna work on getting the the depth finder thing re reinstalled. We gotta make a longer cable for the anchor light to go on, has to go on top of this thing. Uh, and then we gotta install the LED lights. All right, what we gotta do is we have to go straight down, right there. Good? Good solid seat. Oh. Dry rotting wood. Did the 5200 come out on this side too? Yeah. Right. Yep. Go. All right, guys. We got the engine mounted back on. We're rocking and rolling, man. Ready to go. Engine on. We got our nice white coat of paint. Priscilla's ready for C deck. And then install the rod holders. And we're almost back in business, guys. Finally, finally, finally. It's been a long time. All right, guys, C-deck installed, rod holders installed, cup holders installed. Let's go. <laughs> so we're looking at the fuses for our three push-pull switches. All right, so we got these three push-pull switches. Underwater lights. Okay, so this is just pulling it out. Yeah, underwater okay. lights, and this is going to be for these lights over here. Oh, you got them installed? Yeah. Oh, let me see. Oh, look at that. So, and if, LEDs. It's, if it's not enough, we can switch them out. So okay. The middle switch is open for whatever else you want to do. All right, so we have an extra one. And uh, this is the VSRE 
BSR relay, voltage sensitive relay. So it, when you have an isolated battery, when the motor's running and it senses the voltage has dropped, it connects the battery so it will charge it. So it connects both of the batteries? Yeah, when it, when it senses the voltage is low. On the deep cycle or yeah, on the starter? On your deep cycle. On the deep cycle, okay. So, then the, so it'll pull from the starting battery? Yeah, the engine's, when the engine's running. It's like an alternator. alternator that's right. Got it. So now what we just, just for my sake, we moved our starting battery from underneath here up to the center console. Yep. Okay. So this switch right now is on. Yep. Uh, of course you go to off. Yep. And then if you wanted to combine the two batteries, now the two batteries are combined. You got that here too. We got, so we installed, all we got to do is plug in a, uh, extension cord. cord and does does this have to be switched on and off no, yeah, no. that can be off and it'll, it'll charge wire. so these leads here these inline fuses are for the battery charger these two here okay and then um that's it you're gonna go and then this we have uh, our usb yes. installed right yeah so here guys we have our usb Port installed so we can charge a phone or something like that and that that also is that something that can run while this this has got to be on right uh, or does that, that the battery's got to be on battery's got to be on well we clean this up real nice too this you made this look real pretty yeah we use uh, some clips that, that uh, you glue to the side of the boat with um, our cath light okay Kent you're the man dude yeah made it happen baby <laughs> And Kent, how can I have a, uh, Kent's got a, a mobile marine uh, me mechanic company, correct? South Florida Boat Doctor. South Florida Boat Doctor. Is there a website? No, no website. No website. What's your phone number? Word of mouth. 954-839-4583. There it is, man. Kent England, baby. My, my man. Getting us fishing again. <laughs>All right, guys, just a nighttime view of the lights we just installed on Priscilla. Check this out, guys. Uh, right here, we installed some LEDs. Bam. That's going to help us with, uh, with video stuff at night. And when we're tying, tying a rig at night, we can just pop this toggle switch real quick. We've got our transom LED for lighting up the water underneath. We installed an anchor light on top of the uh, polling platform and cabin lights guys check these cabin lights out we got three of them one there one behind the live well to light the live well up one underneath here priscilla's lit up looking pretty guys looking pretty look at this bad boy mm. she's lit up all right so real quick real quick rundown guys of the extra weight that we put on the boat um, this rear deck right here is an add-on. Uh, we figured since we were going to redo the transom, we would redo this rear deck. There was like this really flimsy fiberglass box that our battery sat in and it was really ugly and uncomfortable and just not good. So we decided that we would create, we got some aluminum feet. We had them powder coated black. Um, and we've, we've got those on each side and we built a fiberglass platform with a brace in the middle uh, so that the deck is nice and sturdy. Now this thing is solid as a rock. Uh, of course, we have our polling platform that we added on as well. This would be an additional, uh, a little bit of an additional weight. This thing is pretty light, believe it or not. This is aluminum. Uh, and there's just one piece of fiberglass that goes on top. So it might add I don't know, 25, 30 pounds to the equation, uh, but it's really not a whole lot of extra weight. Uh, the, the, the Probably the most weight that was added was with our transom. We did have a plywood transom and that, that, that's the one that cracked. We ripped that out and we replaced it with a double Kusa board transom. Uh, the Kusa board is lighter than plywood, but we used a lot more of it and uh, we put a whole lot of fiberglass on top. Uh, and so, guys, there's, there is some extra weight on the boat. We don't know how much, so we are going to water test this. First of all, make sure that we didn't do anything wrong and we don't sink. Uh, make sure I put this thing in. Uh, and also, in another video, guys, we're gonna show you how we 
built this polling platform and put it on. And we're also going to water test that in another video. So, uh, guys, that's pretty much all the weight. Oh, we moved. We were having an issue with uh, the rear having a little too much weight. I believe it was because the transom was cracked. And as we would accelerate, it would push the transom back. And that angle difference that the propeller was now propelling upwards instead of straight uh, caused the, the boat to have a difficulty planing out and we struggled a lot with that kind of thing. So um, it's a solid transom. The thing is solid as a rock now. It is probably a little bit heavier, uh, but uh, it's been a long time and uh, we did move the starter battery up here to this console box. So now we've got our starter battery and our deep cycle battery in the same, uh, in the same compartment up here. Both of them used to be in the back. So we moved all that weight up to the middle, which should help us plane out quite a bit. So guys, uh, let's get this thing ramped and we'll water test it and see how she does. Heck yeah, bro. How's that feel, son? You like that, huh? Hey, look over.